Energy is the main uh, renewable energy source. Uh, it comes from uh, agriculture and forestry in Europe. has a lot of benefits in terms of uh, uh, energy security, rural development, uh, uh, greenhouse gas emission reductions. Uh, but there are also some challenges associated to the production of, of biomass in the energy sector. And um, we discussed how these challenges uh, are addressed or minimized through the uh, revised Renewable Energy Directive proposed by the Commission, in particular to make sure that uh, uh, the biomass that we use to produce uh, uh, biofuels from transport or, or power and heat in our houses uh, is sourced uh, in a sustainable way. Um, there is uh, no deforestation attached to it and the use of biomass uh, in the energy sector results uh, in significant greenhouse gas emission reductions. So the proposal made by the Commission and also the, the text that is now uh, getting ready for the trilogues from the Council and the Parliament, they're actually all uh, three uh, good pieces of, uh, of text uh, in our perspective. The, the only thing that I would highlight that is missing is to ensure that it's a truly European market. Because if you don't have a European market, then you get a balkanization with different standards in different countries. That makes it more complex and, and in the end also more expensive for the consumers. Uh, biomass is the only uh, stable and manageable renewable energy source, uh, not like wind or solar. Uh, it can be produced and uh, the production can be planned. Uh, so that's why it should be one component of the renew renewable energy uh, sources in the European Union in next years, in my view. I think that the most important thing about the Renewable Energy Directive is uh, that the sustainability criteria and the rules how the renewable sources will work in the next uh, 10 years or so uh, will not limit the development of the biomass sector in the European Union. We uh, think that biomass does have a role to play, but uh, the, the difficulty is that there are different types of biomass. And uh, whilst biomass from, for example, wastes and residues that would have decayed very quickly and that are not being used by other industries uh, makes a lot of sense, um, harvesting trees or, or using uh, tree stumps or uh, large, large tree trunks for biomass uh, simply makes no sense at all. And the problem is that under the new uh, renewable Energy Directive, uh, there is really nothing that will stop that happening. The criteria that are in there uh, are largely meaningless. And so what the EU uh, risks doing is incentivizing uh, a big expansion in the use of types of biomass that really uh, offer no benefits at all. Uh, in our view, it is uh, is not a given that uh, we're going to use uh, very, very large amounts of biomass going forward, simply because other technologies like offshore wind and onshore wind and, and PV are just becoming uh, so much cheaper. But right now, at least in a Danish context, with 64% uh, of the Danes being connected to the district heating system, if they were not to use uh, sustainable biomass for their heat, uh, the alternative there is to use coal. So in the short term, there is uh, certainly uh, an important role for biomass uh, to, to substitute coal. Well, in primer lugar, tiene que haber un compromiso de los Estados miembros eh, asumiendo que el proceso de descarbonización tiene que ser una obligación y no por lo tanto una opción. Y en este sentido, eh, creemos que introduciendo criterios de sostenibilidad para que no se produzcan deforestaciones innecesarias que a su vez contribuirían negativamente a la lucha contra el cambio climático, pues a partir de criterios de sostenibilidad hay un nicho muy importante, sobre todo en sectores que hay que descarbonizar como la calefacción, donde la biomasa puede jugar un papel muy importante.